Salesforce interview question for asynchronous Apex. Q.1 What is asynchronous Apex? Answer. While working on the Salesforce application, we store huge data in our org and it will keep growing year by year. If we have to run some job that will take some time, then in the case of synchronous Apex, we will get the limit error, heap size error, or timeout error. To avoid such issues, we can do those long running or time consuming operations using asynchronous Apex, which will run in a separate thread and will not impact the main thread. So asynchronous Apex is used to run the process in a separate thread at a later time. 2. Where we can use asynchronous Apex? Answer. Asynchronous Apex can be used in long running or time consuming operations like 1. Sending email to the use 2. Creating complex reports using Apex Code 3. Calling an external system for multiple records 4. Schedule a job for a specific time 5. Chaining Apex Code execution which might use API call 6. Sharing recalculation. 3. What are the benefits of asynchronous processing? Answer. Asynchronous process runs when the system is available for operation. It is not blocking users from doing any work in the application. This will give the below benefit to application. 1. Increase user efficiency. 2. More heap size and higher governor limit. 4. Better scalability. 4. What are the types of asynchronous Apex? Answer. Currently, Salesforce supports four types of asynchronous Apex. 1. Batch Apex 2. Future Methods 3. Queuable Apex 4. Scheduled Apex. 5. Within what time frame will an asynchronous request be processed after being enqueued? Answer. Asynchronous processing has a lower priority than real-time interaction via the browser and API. So it will always run in the background when the resource is available to process asynchronous jobs. We cannot determine when the job will run. It will be determined by the server. It can be immediate also. 6. Can you make a web service call out from a trigger? Answer. We cannot call external web services synchronously from triggers, because calling a web service synchronously from triggers will hold up the database transaction until the callout is completed so we should use future methods to call external web services. 7. Can a future method call another non-future method to process tasks like callouts, and have those methods return data to the future method for further processing? Answer. No, we cannot call future methods from the future method. 8. What are advantages of batch Apex? Answer. 1. Every batch transaction starts with a new set of governor limits. 2. The system itself divides the number of batches for records 3. If one batch fails, the other batches will continue to be executed and successful batches will still be committed to the database. Successful batches are not rolled back when one batch fails. 9. Why use batch Apex in Salesforce instead of the normal Apex? Answer. There are various reasons why batch Apex is better than normal Apex. 1. SOQL queries. Normal Apex uses 100 records per cycle to execute SOQL queries. Whereas, Batch Apex does the same in 200 records per cycle. 2. Retrieval of SOQL queries. Normal Apex can retrieve 50,000 SOQL queries but, in Batch Apex, 50 million SOQL queries can be retrieved. 3. Heap size. Normal Apex has a heap size of 6 megabytes. Whereas, Batch Apex has a heap size of 12 megabytes. 4. Errors. When executing bulk records, normal Apex classes are more vulnerable to encountering errors as compared to Batch Apex. 10. What are some best practices when implementing Batch Apex? 
Answer. 1. Use normal apex instead of batch apex when a small number of records need to run. 2. Use extreme care to invoke a batch job from a trigger. The trigger should not add more batch jobs than the limit 3. Methods declared as future aren't allowed in classes that implement the database. Batchable interface. 4. Methods declared as future can't be called from a batch apex class. 5. All methods in the class must be defined as global or public. 6. Minimize web service callout times. 7. Tune queries used in batch apex code. 8. Minimize the number of asynchronous requests created to minimize the chance of delays. 11. How many schedulable Apex jobs can you have at one time? In other words, what is the maximum number of Apex classes that can be scheduled concurrently? Answer. 100 schedulable Apex jobs can be scheduled. 12. Are synchronous web service callouts supported by scheduled Apex? Ants. No. However, if scheduled Apex calls a batch Apex job which then makes a web service callout, the callout will be supported. 13. What are best practices for future methods? Answer. 1. Every future method invocation adds one request to the asynchronous queue. Avoid design patterns that add large numbers of future requests over a short period of time. 2. Ensure that future methods execute as fast as possible. 3. If using web service callouts, try to bundle all callouts together from the same future method, rather than using a separate future method for each callout. 4. Consider using batch apex instead of future methods to process a large number of records asynchronously. 14. Why subject parameters not supported in future methods? Answer. The subject might change between the time we call the method and the time it executes. That's why S objects can't be passed as arguments to future methods. In this case, the future method will get the old subject values and might overwrite them. 15. Can I chain a job that has implemented allows callouts from a job that doesn't have? Answer. Yes. Callouts are also allowed in chained queuable jobs. 16. Can I call queuable from a batch? Answer. Yes, but it is limited to just one system. NQ job call per execute in the database. Batchable class. Salesforce has imposed this limitation to prevent explosive execution. 17. In which scenario, we can't call a future method from a batch job? Answer. Calling a future method is not allowed in the execute method, but a web service can be called. A web service can also call an at future method. So, we can define a web service having a future method invocation and call the web service from the execute method of batch job. 18. How future method helps in avoiding mixed DML errors? Answer. There are two kinds of S objects in Salesforce. 1. Non-setup. Account, opportunity, etc. 2. Setup. User, groups, queue, etc. If we are performing DML on both kinds of subject in a single transaction, the system doesn't allow it and throws an exception called mixed DML exception stating that a transaction cannot have a mixture of DML operation, setup and non-setup. To resolve this error, we can put DML operations of a particular kind in the future scope. Since both the DML operations are isolated from each other, the transaction doesn't fail. 19. Let's say, we have run an Apex batch to process 2000 records, and it is running with batch size 200. Now, while doing DML on 298th record, an error occurred. What will happen in that case? Answer. In batches, if the first transaction succeeds but the second fails, the database updates made in the first transaction are not rolled back. 
Since the batch size is 200, so the first batch will be processed completely and all data will be committed to DB. In seconds batch, if we are committing records using normal DML statements like insert, update, then the whole batch will be rollbacked. So records 201 to 400 will not be processed. If we use the database DML operations like database, insert with all or none as false, then partial commit can happen and only 298th record will not be processed in that batch, and a total of 97 records will be processed. Also, the other batch execution will not stop. 20. WADIS and NBSP Database Query Locator and NBSP An AMP and NBSP Iterable Answer In Database Query Locator We use a simple query Select To generate the scope of objects the governor limit for the total number of records retrieved by SOQL queries is bypassed, i.e. it can return up to 50 million records. In iterable, we can create a custom scope for processing, which would be not possible to create using SOQL where clauses. The governor limit for the total number of records retrieved by SOQL queries is still enforced. Thanks for watching Salesforce Start.